we are seeing, do you feel we are on course? Well, I want to think we are on course. First, um, regardless of some of the um, series of challenges that have been confronting the, or that seems to be confronting the elections, mm -hmm. I know the main um, electoral um, management body has continued to, you know, give, um, give, have continued to bring all forms of um, assurances yeah. that the elections will hold as much as possible. I mean, or as planned one. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, I think all regions also understand the the importance of these elections. Okay. And Nigerians also understand the importance of these elections. And we think that regardless of what uh, the challenges are, everybody's doing everything, um, all regions are doing everything possible to ensure that they are not sidelined in the elections. So I want to believe that the elections would um, hold as, um, you know, as, as scheduled, although we cannot um, remove one or two issues that, that will happen either pre, during, or after, or in the post-election time. But what is more fundamental is that come um, 25th, mm -hmm. Nigeria will be having a new president. Mm -hmm. But uh, Doctor, uh, what do you think are the greatest uh, challenges uh, facing Nigeria in the run-up to the uh, presidential election? Yeah, one well, of the greatest challenges facing Nigeria today is um, the whole issue of uh, human insecurity. And I call it human insecurity because if we study three months, four months before these elections, we will be facing a series of problems from um, the name. Nigeria had to go and queue up tirelessly to assess their name numbers. Mm -hmm. From there, we, we, um, we went into the um, first scarcity. Yeah. Therefore, first scarcity, we also went into um, um, <laughs> Naira scarcity now. So there are all kinds of queues everywhere. And most of these um, is issues, they are causing a lot of problems to the human being themselves. A lot of frustration everywhere, a lot of anger, and um, a lot of insecurity everywhere, and a lot of un uncertainty about what is going to happen. But it's, the only certainty about the whole process is that Nigerians think that they have been ushered into an electionary process. Okay. Now, um, let's first leave all those challenges apart. On the part of the umpire, you are a political scientist. You you read the, you have an understanding of the environment. Do you feel INEC is really prepared for this election? I think INEC is Everything possible. In fact, I, I must also commend their proactive response to some of these challenges. Like, for instance, some of the challenges, some of the uh, INEC offices that were born, the commission was quick enough to respond that no vital things, no documents, or anything that would affect the election seems to have um, got born in that in, in, in that yes. process. And that's what you mean. Then, of course, last week ago, the INEC chairman also met with the, um, the CBN um, okay. director, raising some fears. Okay. That the um, the Naira um, the Naira scarcity is likely to have yeah, an, effect. an effect on the election, particularly in terms of logistics, yeah. moving um, INEC materials around. But those issues are issues that have been uh, that are most fundamental. But I don't think that they are likely going to have a grave impact on the elections. Mm -hmm. So in terms of preparations, mm -hmm. I think INEC is doing well. Mm. Now, as a scholar in uh, political science, I mean, how will you rate electioneering so far? Well, if you want to look at the electioneering process so far, it's been, it's been with mixed reactions, mixed, um, mixed um, cause, um, outcomes, particularly if you look at uh, what this election means for the region, coming first from the issue of who was supposed to be the candidate, and what region was supposed to produce the president, you know, we had all those issues. And of course, when all those issues were eventually resolved, most of um, the election process started. And the way and manner the candidates themselves have, you know, have comported themselves and the supporters that are tied to the election itself has really shown. And then, of course, the supporters themselves, which is not, as, which is not unexpected, there have been some little of confrontations, you know, threats and some other things like that. But what is very fundamental is that I think that we must accept the fact that the political space seems to be opening, opening up day by day. 
-hmm. Each election is providing a new opportunity to see that there's, the, the political space is opening one. Then two, we also have a situation whereby we now have um, a procedure of, uh, of candidates. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have candidates to pick from, right? And we also have parties to pick from, from. Which, are, which, are most, which is most fundamental in an electionary process. Then we also have a situation whereby candidates are being forced or compelled, you know, to come up with a manifestos mm -hmm. and really tell Nigeria make convincing statements about this is exactly xyz i intend to do and this is how i want to go about it all right um you are still watching new dawn the wednesday edition we'll quickly take a break now when we come back we'll go on with the discussion 2023 the road to the elections and the matters arising stay with us we'll be back <laughs> And we're looking at 2023, the road to Aso Rock, and the matters are rising therein. Prior to this time, we had the doctor, the political scientist, who's been talking to us, Dr. Nicholas Rame. Uh, we're being joined now by another public affairs analyst, Mr. Yobam B. Faloui. Mr. Faloui, we'd like to welcome you to this program. Good morning. Always a pleasure. All right, we are looking at the road to Aso Villa, Aso Rock, Aso Abuja, you know, the seat of government. And uh, we are looking at the matters arising. In view of the convolutions, the situational, uh, you know, circumstances around us here now, um, that was one of the first questions we asked um, Dr. Uh, Rame. The, the question is, do you really think seriously that we are prepared for this election? Um, well, um, uh, it's, it's neither there nor here with the recent um, happenings when it comes to elections. Um, I, I don't think uh, elections should go on in a situation where people are have been agitated and um, protesting for some things or the other. Mm -hmm. But again, we are hoping that um, in the coming days, things may uh, be doused okay. by several measures that can be taken by the government. Okay. Uh, but looking at the stretch from political parties' primaries to date, yeah. I think there's some sort of improvement. Uh, of course, many of us were disappointed by the monetization of the primaries of um, the leading parties and um, across board, I mean, uh, both at the federal and the state levels. But um, the Electoral Act uh, brought some soccer uh, along the line. But again, towards the end, we're also witnessing a lot of court cases dis uh, being used to decide um, candidature of um, aspirants and all of that, which is, um, to me, is almost negating uh, the constitutional rights of um, the people. Uh, if delegates have come together to elect people and one way or the other politicians find a way to take advantage of the Electoral Act and begin to go to the court to decide uh, who represents the people, um, mm -hmm. that is, again, some um, law on, on our part. But, you know, our, pol our politicians don't rest. Uh, they always mm -hmm. find the alternative wrong patterns to do things. And um, uh, so looking at those very few low parts, um, um, we, one can say that um, we've had more wins than uh, uh, lows. Uh, 
uh, if you consider preparation of INA, distribution of PVC, extension, okay. um, listening to the yearnings of the people, NUC saying students should be on holiday during the electionary period. I mean, um, the professor of INA is also saying that this election, look, this election is about the young people. I mean, those are sensitive statements that portrays that the people at the helms of affairs of conducting these elections are really listening to the majority. Um, the voice of the majority is that of the youths at, at this point in time. Okay. Um, considering the demography of um, uh, registered voters and of course the demography of Nigeria as a whole. So uh, that's some level of development. That's some level of um, uh, applause uh, to, 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 to the people at the helms of affairs of conducting these um, elections. But of course, the last lap mm -hmm. is where we are now having issues, where um, um, this NERA policy is bringing beautiful policy, bad implementation, bringing a lot of um, agony to, to the same people that have been shortchanged over the years, and now people want to make policies to, uh, you know, uh, reposition the country. Yet again, is the people that are being put through so much uh, pain. Um, sad um, is our reality. Uh, we hope that something is done uh, prior to uh, the elections. Well, so, you know, I would say it's, it's, it's a beautiful one, but of course we must learn our lessons across the whole um, length of the whole preparations and of course make adjustments um, in the nearest future. Okay, now uh, let me come to Dr. Nicholas and that's about, let's look at the, the essence of this entire election. I, would you really say that um, the main issues are re have really been addressed, particularly, um, you know, regarding manifestos. Are we not just talking about mundane things? Have we really asked these people questions? Are, have they even told us, you know, um, what they want to do? Do we even know what, uh, you know, each of the party, you know, we, we stands for? Do we, do we, are we fully aware? Uh, of, you know, what each party wants to do. I mean, uh, do, we, do we, for example, I, you know, I was discussing with somebody and I said, okay, do these guys, do these players, do they know the challenges on ground now? Are we asking them those questions? Are they giving us right answers? What is your perspective in that direction? Yeah, my perspective is super clear. In any system, you first pay attention to what the rules are. Okay. You pay attention to what the actors are. Then you also pay attention to what the actors say, then mm -hmm. what they do. When you understand some of these analysis, you find to, to know that over time, the, the, the trends of campaigns that have taken place in Nigeria seems to be more like a monolithic campaign okay. from what the actors themselves think. Okay. And that's why you see sometimes it's very, very difficult holding political allies accountable for their political statements or their campaigns. It's either they go into um, deniers or they're almost not able to achieve 10% of what they have said. Be and this is, the reason is not far-fetched. It is that some of their campaigns are not really citizen-driven. Okay. Right? They are not citizen-driven and they are not really in, in a aim that addressing the core problems people are really comforted with. And this is not unexpected because if you see the trends of our political elites and how they how they live, either before gaining power or doing them, you see that they are not isolated from the people, okay. not isolated to the extent that they go around with sirens, so they don't know that rules are bad. If they are going to visit somewhere, they ensure that the rule is very clear, the rules are clean, and so that thing. So how then do they understand the core challenges people are facing? So for instance. How many of them have gone to the ATM to cure for two, three hours and eventually go home with 2,000 euros? Mm -hmm. How many of them have gone to the ATM to cure up and eventually speak to issues? Uh, every political party, every candidate has a manifesto, but the question is, you know, are people also willing to you know, go through you know, these manifestos? Ah, well, um, you know, we are, we are in, as I tell people, we are in a transition phase. Uh, we are in a transition phase in the sense that prior to this time, uh, people could say anything anywhere on their campaign trails and, you know, it goes into the, uh, into the thin air and nobody is holding anybody accountable. 
But you know now we have records on the internet. Maybe that's why they hate the young people so much. I mean, I've seen videos where uh, one of the uh, leading presidential candidates was castigating a former president for nominating an elderly person to a position. And he was saying at that time that uh, Nigerian people should not uh, use elderly people to run the affairs of the country. That the, the work there is more rigorous for, a, for an elderly person uh, to be positioned in that place. And unfortunately for him, the same thing is being used against him today. And the videos are there. That's the beauty. So we are in a transitioning phase. And um, the beauty of it is that you cannot eat your cake and have it again. And anytime any of these political people tell you, uh, young people, uh, social media is this, is that, it's because the thing is hitting them hard. So people are getting to uh, question based on issues. And you could see there's one uh, presidential candidate that has really been tackling the issues head on and telling you, um, this is your queuing at the fell uh, station now. When I get there, I'm not, going, I'm not going to make that happen to you. Uh, this is what I will do. So let's, let's give it to them. The politicians are trying to come forth and adjust to the system uh, because we understand the majority of them have um, a 1970-something or 80-something system, you know, running, still running in the political space in the 2023. So we, we, should, we should give them the grace to adjust, although they are finding it difficult. A president said he left the social media because the, the bashings were too much. I mean, this is a 2023. This is not 1980, something that you say something and everybody will keep quiet. The Sorosoke generation will not take bullshit. So we are getting to that level now where people will be accounting for, I mean, the, the, the current minister of um, works or um, that's um, Babatunde Oliver Jifashola, has some quotes of him that have been used against him now. Video evidence and uh, written evidence is in, uh, in the tabloid. So, this, we are going into days where people will now be accountable for what they say and what they did not say. So, um, it's a transition phase, but I see that the future is very bright. And um, this is where we should be going and heading on to. And of course, um, some of other cultural issues that buzz around transparency and accountability, especially in Yoruba land, where uh, so, so when somebody is your elder, you know, when they are erring, you don't, you don't come across and you know, tell them, the Sorosoke generation have abolished all those things. They will tell you, Mr. Man, you say so, so here, you are saying this, uh, what is it? You are, your, your words are not correct with your actions. So we are beginning to have people being questioned. And that is the first stage of accountability. So going forward, we should be happy that some sort of accountability will come forth. And the ruling party now are already being dragged for not being able to account for achieving some of their manifestos. Some of the things they said. People documented it. We make one dollar, one dollar, we make this thing, this thing, this thing. How many have they done? And they are being, that is being used against them now. So we should be happy for the trend of what um, we are having. At this point, particular point in time, we have to be very hopeful that the future will give us something better. Okay, let me come to Dr. Nicholas here because he's been talking about the youths and all. But then, are the youths not overhyped? For example, okay, he was talking about the Facebook, you know, the social media. Fine, there's a lot of traffic on the social media, but does it really translate to uh, involvement in actual political process? And, um, you know, do you really think that the youths, you know, uh, are coming out more? And then coming out more is one thing. Are they, you know, doing what, for example, how many of them have their PVCs now? Can we, and I think this election will be a litmus test, you know, to test the strength of the voting process or the voting powers of the youth. So do you think the youths are... Are you not sure? Yes, is it not just we're just talking, they're just talking and talking, and then they are they are backing, they cannot bite. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think the challenges on ground now is one that has hit the youth so hard that sitting on the on, on the fence mm -hmm. at critical moments like this would not help any of them. One, mm -hmm. and if you go by INEC um, um, records, the youth. Um, have the highest population in terms of registered people for these elections. One. And of course, let us also forget that there have been some um, 
some you know series of events even from the SARS protests and some other issues that are you know led to awaken um, awaken the consciousness among the youths that they think that enough of all these issues and they needed to take a front row or a front seat in terms of the affairs of this country and that is one day then of course in terms of to what extent are they able to you know deploy these um, attributes to ensuring that um, whatever they plan to do is achievable is another thing but what i must also say is that if you look at the trends of party system itself if you look at um, candidates in the political parties either they are either they are the one or they have lost there's more inclu inclusion of youth into the political space which we must uh, admit that is a, is, is a step ahead and let us also forget that it's not really an easy thing because some of the political allies themselves they feel very threatened by the by the kind of energy these youths are coming with so they also do everything possible you know to ensure that they don't get um these um positions mm -hmm. first some they do the extent of raising the bar or all kinds of other um how the, um, issues to ensure that the youth do not really get there but those are not substantial enough to deter them okay. so and just like i said we we really want to see apart from who's going to win this and uh, the forthcoming election we really want to see the extent to which the youth you know impact on the election in terms of their contribution in who eventually wins the elections in terms of how conscious they have become after the elections and in terms of what they also expect in the post-election period in terms of accountability they also see, want to see the extent to which political parties get committed to is it goes beyond them um, gender policy right we also want to see the extent to which political parties get involved in terms of you know um effectively um, engaging the youth okay. in the activities i want to mean uh, uh, effectively engaging the youth not begin to throw them some penny positions and, and you and you make it look like you have done something else because if we look at global standing look at countries across the world today mm -hmm. even the public if we want to talk about the youth in terms of age we might have a problem in nigeria so look at some countries where have people between 35 30s in their early 30s and late 40s becoming prime ministers and, and what have you so it means that the youth themselves have a, 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 a role to play and let's not forget that there's never a day any, um, any political allies within these political parties are going to willfully shift you know or adjust for them to to you know get their reading they must first continue to participate effectively in the system and two they must also show discipline in the sense that they are ready to take over positions and three they must also ensure that they display a high level of accountability because some of the issues people have been raising among the youth when people use criticism and, and against them is the fact that even with some of them that have been engaged in the system they have, they have shown to be very highly corrupt or highly highly indisciplined which can also be a, a, be a problem so the tax is before them to ensure that they demonstrate that we are capable and we can also deliver mm. yeah. well um mr Fallery, i think the question is uh, does it look as if a youth are also ready uh, to take the mantle of leadership and are you comfortable with the involvement so far because some people would say oh it just all on social media mm -hmm. and social media at times you know, could be very deceptive <laughs> <laughs> uh, well uh, you know these are the negative things they portray about the young um, generation when you ask them to give examples of their ability is their ability youth is their ability youth they make some other um, examples do you know how fantastic nigerian young people are across the world working with the topmost people in the world obama has at least two nigerians in his team just name it so uh, when they say all these things i just laugh because um, for a father that knows that uh, one day he will bow out it always should be his priority to hand you know to hold his, his child and teach his child to sustain the legacy of the family but that's not what we have in nigeria don't let anybody deceive you and tell you that young people are more corrupt than this thing if they were more corrupt they wouldn't be fighting for the soul of this country at this point in time while the political elites that are that claim not to be as corrupt as the young people are the ones ready to smash off this country so that when they go the country does not also exist again <laughs> 
So the truth is bare before us. The Nigerian youths are the are the are the are the angels God has sent to to revamp this country, to fight for the soul of this country. But with what I've seen in the political space in, in within last year to this time, I can categorically say that the elders of this country are extremely corrupt oh, and illegitimate. <laughs> Most of them, majority of them, they are the problem of this country. And I can say that again and again. So when they come out and come to throw negative yes, vibes, some will say, I mean, yeah, what's of your view conducted? Am I sure that we can <laughs> see it? <laughs> if, 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 as people that make policies, you are okay with monetizing primaries, hundred million for 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 contesting tickets. Were you there? Uh, of course, we can see it on paper. <laughs> we can see it on paper that that's how much money they get on it. How many young people can afford that money if they have not gone into illegitimacy? You see? So, so please let it be on record. They've said my Nigerian youth are lazy. They are they are recounting their words. They are recounting their statements. They should not go near the Nigerian youth and say negative things about Nigerian youth. We are very very committed, patriotic. And we are trying our possible best not to go by the ways of what they've taught us. Because the environment also has an effect on how a youth is developed in this country. What do you see around? Short changing, running shortcuts, and extreme corruption. And in a place like the land, they tell you that you cannot accuse your elders of being corrupt. You cannot challenge them to be transparent. You cannot challenge them to be accountable. And look at where we have found ourselves. Okay, now Dr. Nicola, some will say that even our so-called elders that we have now, many of them began as youths, at least in the, um, by the military era, our head of states, many of them started 30s, in their 30s, many of them became um, rulers, you know, leaders at very young ages, and many of them have not even left the scene until now. So, you know, they, they are afraid that, okay, even if you have, are they not setting another um, pace for these youths that, okay, when this next set of youths eventually also take over, would they not hold on to the reins of power again for this long? Or is there a process whereby, you know, at a particular time, um, things can evolve that, you know, you will be able to give... Um, power to the youth or in, in, you know, incorporate them within the system. Uh, people like Chief Obafemi Awolowo, Dr. Namdi Azikwe, all of them started when they were used. They, when they, they began to make, but we don't have that um, picture now. Well, I'm not, I've not really seen any visible use in that charisma, in that capacity, you know. And then, okay, even when they get power, are they not also now going to become, you know, holders to the reins of power such that they won't even give it back, you know, to the others that are coming behind them by virtue of the template that is being put together for us here? Yeah, you see, first let me make this statement. You don't, you don't, you don't sit at your comfort zone and really think that you are going to get power. Okay. And that's why if you had the statement I've made the other time, there's no other issue than active participation. Okay. You must demonstrate that you are ready to, to take up leadership roles okay. and you have what it takes okay. to take that. Now let's go a bit historical and look at the um, early formations of political parties. Of course, you discussed the issues of um, our Nigerian, um, we had um, Nigerians who were occupying uh, leadership positions at their early age and some mm -hmm. other things. Of course, we had an um, interruption of the political space by the military rule mm -hmm. and if you see the form, the party formation system that took place in 19, since then, in 1999 mm -hmm. you could understand why it was a, a bit difficult for the youth to break in mm -hmm. in fact it was also very difficult for more political parties to break in mm -hmm. because the system then what we had was that we hurriedly you know ushered ourselves into a democratic rule whereby we ended up giving those same people who have accused of, 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 you know, bastardizing the system mm -hmm. to be the guidance of the political system. And that was why, the, you see, some of the kind of politics that were being played in, um, since like, from 1990 to about 2003, that they were very, very Dracula politics. 
It's either we want you or we don't want you. There was no pluralism, there was no open space, there were no other um, political parties dissenting voices. But as time goes on, right, we see that there seems to be a lot of improvement in the system. Okay. Now, you like it or not, the youths are also participating now. Okay. What I cannot say, I might not categorically say, at this percentage. Okay. But if we say from 999, we can do a survey. We see that okay. there seems to be in, um, improvement in terms of how youths participate in the electoral process, okay. which is a certain thing. Now, the other issue of if they would also follow trends, okay. like those they have accused, is what I think is a very dicey thing to answer. You know why? Because if you study very well the whole electionary process these days, the way the youth are also involving, they are involving in the system not just as um, participants, but as the third force in the sense of calling for accountability. And these things are not issues that come. And just like um, Amika Cabral will always say, that the only way revolution becomes possible in a country is the living conditions. Okay. Now, many of the youth today have become a shadow of themselves. Okay. People graduate from the university 10 years after have not gotten jobs. Some people end up staying without having good jobs. A lot of them result to many jobs and other things. In a system where the political class is very, very irresponsible and reckless to the um, plight of those people. And some of these issues have forced them into the police, into the system, thinking that no, things cannot continue like this. And let's also forget that the same way they are also coming to the system, it is the same way some other people are also thinking that they must be held accountable. Uh, accountable. Okay. What it therefore means is that the kind of political system that was run of old might not necessarily be the system we are today. And just like what you, see, what you also said in this area of um, you know of um, technology, yeah. right? Holding particular light accountable becomes a bit easier compared to what it was yeah. one. And in this area whereby there's um, you know there's priority in the system, whereby at least we have um, there's little tolerance for opposition voices, mm -hmm. right? Holding the, the youth accountable for the becomes easier and i think that is what some of them are also clamoring they are clamoring in the sense that they don't want to continue to see politics from a master servant or a son and father relationship they want a system whereby one they have um, open access to who they have voted for one two they also have this the, the power to also hold them accountable and call them no this is not what you have said and I think that is another fear for the political class today because the way and manner the thing that the youth are also you know engaging them yeah. to them is yeah. is unprecedented. Okay. It's unprecedented because that if you say something today and if you're not careful, you that same question can be asked three different times to you and you make three different mistakes. So if the if such person is not a very mature person, he feels insulted. Okay. But that is not what it's supposed to be. So what we are also saying now is that, that the youth are also you know, pushing to the system, like I've said, and I'll keep on saying, they must also ensure that they are ready to give account, I mean, they are ready to okay. hold and um, be held accountable, okay. one, and they should also ensure that they don't slide the trends of um, authoritarianism. Because if we, if, if we continue to slide that trend, it means that we, are, we might end up saying we are not really a democratic system because a system that does not allow for checks and balances, a system that does not allow for um, dissenting voices, a system that is not open for you know criticisms okay. might not really be a, a very good system, even though the system is progressing. Okay, now, now okay, uh, um, Mr. Fallery, uh, given the Japa trend, you know, this has come among youths, I could, I could count about 10 friends you know, mm -hmm. that have left. And even some that are vocal on social media, they are not, they are outside the shores of Nigeria and they are eating up you know, the polity. Uh, what does this say about uh, this assumed you know, uh, readiness on the part of the youths? Uh, well, um, as, as you've said, um, the youths that are abroad, if they were not patriotic, they were not concerned about the country, if they were not concerned about Nigeria, if they don't love Nigeria, they wouldn't be participating in discourse that has to do with the political space in Nigeria. Because they have no reason to do that. Because they are in a place where systems are working. And, but the truth is that what we have found out is that they suffer a lot of depression. They are 
cuts are back on. And that's why you saw their participation in the NSAS protest. And that's why when we call, when we say anything about patriotism, I don't think anybody in the political elite has the justification to come out and talk about patriotism. These young people, they are far away in a better condition, pursuing their educational stores and remitting money is back home. But yet, there's this pleasure we derive as young people to be proud of our country anywhere we go to. Mm -hmm. I've been to a of country where at the airport, the way they treated me, I was I was I was I was angry. And I was telling them it's not your fault. It's the fault of the elders back home that have destroyed the image of this country. So for young people, participation, not going ahead with uh, the trend, being ready, let me tell you, every day we wake up, the, the amount of energy we put into not being like the political elites is, is one of the biggest problems that we have. In a space where you don't have mentors. In a space where you don't have... I am telling you... No, no, I am telling you... We have no roots, you know. In as much as we have uh, that we are okay. we have politicians. Uh, yes. We have the yes. good people to come out and stop hiding. They should come out and let them out. We can count and we have many of them. They should come out. We want to see more of them coming out. We have many of them. We have many of them. We have many of them. Every day we wake up, we are looking at them and we are praying to God not to be like them. I know you are angry. Yeah. I know you are angry. Yeah. You tell us that the three people need to abject poverty and you tell us we are not to be angry at them. The young people are ready and more than ready. Okay. We implore the elites, the political class, the good people amongst them to come out and mentor us. Okay. We lack mentorship. But are you also open? Are you open for mentorship? Oh, why not? There are many. <laughs> there are I, I, I'm, I'm lucky, lucky to have, have one. For I am lucky to have one of them. <laughs> and if, it, if I tell you what the person is also facing in the political space because he's, he's, he's one of the good people, then you understand what we have in our hands in this country. Okay, yeah. now, uh, Mr. Pai, there are many political elites out there that are open. They should be coming out. Also, to mentor many youths. Okay. Okay. So what we hear their voices, they should stop hiding. Okay, now, let's go hide Even one of the presidential candidates that is running today, that we are putting our weight behind, he yeah. took him time to come out. Okay. We have to come and get him to okay. come out. Okay. 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 Well, I, I think I followed this issue keenly when I was in South Africa. I still interacted with one or two Nigerians who are leading this um, issue. I, at the time, attended one or two forums where these issues were discussed, either at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or um, Nigerian um, high, um, high Commissions and some other things. I think, and if you look at it very well, Nigerians and diaspora, they are contributing so much to the system. And just like what he said, even though most of them are out of the country, they still have this political affiliation to the country. Their parents are back home. Their investments are back home. And two, and three, they also feel disappointed that after several years, we are where we are. And they, and, and they also see that in some of the countries they are today, people don't um, subject themselves to being ridiculed. The system works because people are committed to making the system work. We, we have ANEC officials, we, have ANEC, um, we can also have ad hoc staffs that will help them work across these countries. First, let's have a, a, a data of how many a day. Two, they will, be, they will have some failures because even if you look at the diaspora themselves, they have become so prepared to the extent that they are ready to get involved at any point. Right. But let's also forget that it's going to involve some form of technology All right. at the moment. But how prepared is INEC um, about that? So, but what is fundamental is that we must begin to think towards that direction. All right. Uh, we really have a lot of issues we would have loved to thrash out this morning. But time, unfortunately, is not in our favor. We would have loved to look at the infrastructure. Are we fully prepared infrastructure-wise? Are we... I we say we can go safely to this election and um, we're going to have a free and fair election? We would have loved to ask many more questions, but then time is not our friend. We want to thank Dr. Nicholas 
Rame for being part of this discussion this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And uh, the man, the youth, the man <laughs> that is this bustling with energy. I'm looking forward to you going there and then you do. You also take a position, join a party, yeah. and then be part of the process. <laughs> Mr. I am going to go find you. We are open. We are open to do that in the near future. I meant all other people too. Yes, yes, yes. They have a lot of energy. They have, they have, they have, they have energy. <laughs> just like just like many youths are also open. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, but I've been in the, I've been in the system. You know, I've I've been trying my bits in the system and also trying to mentor a couple of people. I mean, we need to um, make use of it because irrespective of how we like it, naturally, young people who have to be left with the leadership positions yeah. very soon. Yeah. We don't go to wake people that are dead up to come and lead us again. I mean. So it's a natural thing that will happen, and the only thing we can do is to prepare them. Our oh, son will say age is even inconsequential. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden is 80. That's uh, the American president. Uh, well, 